What if I told you you could make your headphones sound like any other headphone out there with just a few clicks? Well, hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and that's actually mostly true. Uh, there are some mm, actually uh, caveats, but we're going to ignore those for now because in this episode of Waveguide, I'm going to show you how you can use automatic functions built into Squiglink to generate parametric EQ profiles that will transform your headphones. And you can take those profiles and load them in your favorite EQ app. Now, if you don't already have a favorite EQ app, well, I've got you covered in my last video. Go back and check out the previous video of this EQ series where I talked about different options for EQ apps. But if you do already have an EQ app of choice, well, good, because I've been promising that EQ is S tier when it comes to the audio chain in terms of the things that make the most difference. And in this episode of Waveguide, I'm going to prove it. You're going to be able to experience it for yourself. And if you like the idea of helpful content like this, well, I think you're also going to like our sponsor, Hi-Fi Go. Hi-Fi Go is an online retailer of audio equipment. If you want to check out like the latest stuff, what's new in IMs and headphones and show your support for this series, well, check them out in the link down below. Otherwise, let's get to the tutorial. All right, here's a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today, and it all happens inside of Squiglink. So on Squiglink and other sites like it, you've got this equalizer tab that brings up this very robust EQ functionality that was developed by a community member by the name of Rosa. So quick shout out to Rosa, by the way. Uh, and this equalizer function, it allows you to make parametric EQ profiles that are made for your specific headphone because you're starting from frequency response data that was measured from your exact make and model. Now, there's a lot of, I don't know, pretty scary boxes and buttons over here, but don't worry, we're not going to have to learn any of that today because we're relying on the automatic functionalities here. All you're going to need to do is pick your headphone and what you want it to sound like. So I'm going to break this down into basically two sections. We're going to cover automatically EQing your headphones to match a target response, and they'll also show you how you can automatically EQ your headphone to match another headphone. All right, EQing to targets. And I guess before we start, what even is a target? So there are these dotted gray lines that you see in a lot of frequency response graphs that effectively represent an ideal frequency response. Now, there are a lot of targets out there, which suggests rightly so that what's an ideal frequency response for one person might not be an ideal frequency response for everybody. But if you don't already know like what your preferred sound signature is, a target is usually a good place to start. Now, again, there's a lot of targets out there. So which one to choose? Well, the good thing is that you can try them all. But if you're looking for a place to start, generally the ones that say DF, diffuse field, that are tilted, those are usually a pretty good place to start as well as the Harman target. So start there and then start experimenting. To get started, we're going to select our target like we just talked about. The targets appear down here at the bottom of the graph, or like I mentioned, you can just stick with whatever is enabled by default. And then go up here to the search box, and we're going to search for our headphone. And for this demo, I'm going to be using the Sennheiser HD 600, which is a favorite headphone of mine. And once you select that, the frequency response data for your headphone should display over here on the right. Now, once you've got that, we want to click into the equalizer tab, which again is over here, and that's going to pull up all those scary boxes and buttons, scroll right past them, ignore them for now. And what we're looking for is this auto EQ button. Just tap the auto EQ button. And what Squigglink is going to do is it's going to automatically generate an EQ profile that will take your frequency response for your headphone and turn it into the target frequency response that we're after. You can see that these boxes have been filled in with numbers automatically. So now once that's done, you can just come down here, click the export button, which will download uh, a file to your computer, which looks like this. And now you've got an EQ profile, parametric EQ profile that you can import in your favorite EQ software. And it's really that simple. You've done it. You're done. Now, as you can see, this is super powerful and surprisingly easy, but I want you to keep in mind a couple of caveats and limitations to all of this. Uh, for starters, uh, auto EQing the treble frequencies especially is a little bit fraught, maybe even more than a little bit fraught, because more so than other parts of the frequency response, uh, high frequency stuff, think above six kilohertz, is especially dependent on your own personal anatomy. So if you see a really narrow peak in the frequency response data and you use a narrow EQ filter to try and tame that, you might be killing a peak that doesn't exist in your head or the peak might exist somewhere else. So just keep in mind that there are some limits here and generally it might be a good idea to just ignore the filters above six kilohertz that are generated automatically. This is where manual EQ is going to be a lot better. 
Uh, another thing to keep in mind is just that measurement data quality matters a lot here, as you might imagine. Um, keep in mind the, the source equipment that was used to make the measurement, or maybe even just like how consistent the, the person who created the data, collected the data, how consistent is their methodology? Because as you can imagine, this very much very directly out or influences the output. Um, in fact, if you use these auto EQ functions between multiple sources of data, like multiple different databases, you're going to get pretty different results. And um, that just kind of highlights that, well, this is not an exact science, which frankly is something good to keep in mind generally. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is just on the topic of these targets, it is generally a good idea maybe kind of required uh, that you use a, a target that is built for the rig that was used to measure the, the make the measurement. All right. Um, for example, like I'm measuring on a particular rig, which is sort of a, a Keymar KB 006 X rig. So I'm using a target on my site that is matched for that rig. If you take this target to another person's set of data or take another person's set of data to another site and import it and compare it to a target that they've got that's not made for their data, well, you're probably not doing something that you think that you're doing. Um, so yeah, just keep those limitations in mind. Um, experiment and ultimately just like trust your ears. Like I know there's some caveats there, but you know, if it sounds better to you, that's the point. And if it doesn't sound better to you, We'll just keep experimenting and try new things because that's frankly half the fun. All right, now here's the really fun stuff. We're going to make your headphones sound like another headphone. And like before, there are some caveats here. Like this is not going to literally make your headphone sound exactly like another headphone, but it will be close enough that you can tell if the tonal balance of another headphone is going to be something that you like. And frankly, you can probably even give the spatial effects like the sound stage of another headphone to your headphone. Here's how. All right, first, instead of picking a target, we actually wanna make sure that we've disabled all of the targets. All right, so you don't want anything down here enabled. You want a nice, clean graph. Then, like before, we're gonna go up here to the search and we're going to find the headphone that we want to start with, right? My Sennheiser HD 600. And then next, we wanna search for the headphone uh, that we wanna EQ to. And rather than clicking the name here, click the plus button. And what that'll do is that will add that frequency response on top of the previous one. Now, with that done, of course, again, navigate to the equalizer tab. We're going to scroll past the scary boxes, hit this auto EQ button. And what we should get is a parametric EQ profile that's going to take your starting headphone, in this case, the Sennheiser HD 600, and generate an EQ profile that will turn it into your target headphone. In this case, the Dan Clark Audio E3. Again, export that profile, open up that file, load it into your EQ app of choice, and congrats, you did it. And there you have it. You now have EQ superpowers. And I think you'll agree, it's not that hard. The only thing I ask is that you use these powers responsibly. Like, don't trash another headphone just because you auto EQ'd to it and you didn't like the result. Instead, use these powers to experiment, have fun, and generally learn about your own preferences. But we're not done with EQ yet, because in the next episode of Waveguide, I'm going to dive into manual EQ, which is not as easy, but it actually avoids some of the problems that we have here with auto EQ, and it actually gives you more flexibility to customize the sound to your exact preferences. Excited? Well, thank Hi-Fi Go for making these videos possible. And uh, I guess like the video, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers. of reviews we now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools uh, hey this review is super and so are you grab your headphones sniff a graph and share your thoughts in this pursuit that you can't wait to see it